Wood was never meant to curve. At least that's what it looks like, rigid, stubborn, straight. And yet, in medieval Europe, craftsmen were bending timber into perfect arcs, strong enough to survive storms at sea, the shock of battle, and decades of hard use. No electricity, no steel presses, no modern clamps, just heat, moisture, timing, and skill. What they figured out quietly shaped the medieval world. This wasn't a parlour trick. This was survival engineering. Curved wood is everywhere in medieval history, even if we don't always notice it. Longbows that could launch arrows hundreds of metres. Ship ribs that could flex with waves instead of snapping. Wagon wheels that absorbed shock instead of shattering. Furniture that lasted generations. None of that works with straight planks hacked into shape. It works because medieval builders understood how to bend wood without breaking it. Here's the important part. They weren't forcing the wood into submission. They were persuading it. That mindset made all the difference. If you carve a curve out of a straight board, you cut across the wood's grain. That weakens it. Medieval builders knew this from experience, even if they didn't describe it in modern scientific terms. Grain is strength. Break the grain and the piece fails faster. Bending, on the other hand, keeps the fibres intact. The wood becomes curved, but the grain still flows from one end to the other. That creates strength you simply can't fake by carving. This mattered in a world where materials were precious. Timber took decades to grow. A failed piece wasn't just wasteful, it was dangerous. So bending became a core technique for anyone building something that had to endure real stress. The most widespread medieval wood-bending method relied on heat and moisture. Steam bending, though the term came much later, was already in use by the early Middle Ages. The idea is simple, but the execution takes discipline. Wood contains lignin, a natural binder that holds fibres together. When heated and exposed to moisture, lignin softens. The wood doesn't turn floppy, but it becomes flexible enough to bend slowly without cracking. Medieval craftsmen achieved this using steam pits, boiling troughs, or enclosed boxes fed by heated stones and water. There was no universal setup. Shipyards improvised steam chambers from planks and clay. Bowyers, well, they heated staves over kettles. Wheelwrights used long troughs set over fires. What really mattered wasn't the structure itself, it was control. Too little heat, and the wood snaps. Too much, and it weakens permanently. This wasn't rushed work, not at all. A thick timber could take hours to soften. Once ready, it had to be bent immediately and fixed in place before cooling. Miss the window, and, well, you start over. Once heated, the wood was bent around forms. These were wooden frames shaped to the exact curve needed. Contrary to the idea of medieval work being rough or imprecise, these forms were carefully measured and reused for years. Clamps were simple but effective. Wooden pegs, rope windlasses, wedges, and even gravity itself did the job. The bend was applied gradually never forced. Cracks were the enemy, and experienced craftsmen could feel resistance change through their hands. Then came the hardest part, waiting. The wood had to dry completely while held in position. Depending on thickness, that could take days or even weeks. Only then would the curve set permanently. Release it too early, and the wood springs back. 
Patience wasn't optional. It was part of the technique. One of the most famous applications of medieval wood bending appears in the English longbow. Contrary to popular belief, longbows weren't always straight. Subtle bends were introduced during shaping and heat treatment to fine-tune how energy travelled through the stave. Bowyers use dry heat, often over open flames, to induce slight reflex curves. This wasn't dramatic bending, it was controlled correction. Done right, it increased power without compromising durability. Here's the clever part. These adjustments could be made repeatedly over a bow's lifetime. Heat, bend, cool, test. Medieval archers understood their weapons as living objects, not fixed tools. That mindset gave them adaptability on the battlefield. Nowhere was wood bending more critical than in shipbuilding. Medieval ships weren't rigid shells. They were flexible structures designed to move with water. The ribs, known as frames, had to curve naturally to support planking while absorbing wave impact. Shipwrights bent massive oak timbers using steam pits dug directly into the ground. Fires heated stones. Water produced steam. The timber softened just enough to be hauled out and bent into shape by teams working in sync. This wasn't brute force. It was choreography. A poorly bent rib could doom an entire vessel. So these techniques were guarded closely, passed from master to apprentice through years of hands-on training. Written manuals came much later. Until then, this knowledge lived in muscle memory. What makes medieval wood bending so relevant today is how practical it still is. Strip away the period tools and the principles remain unchanged. Heat softens structure. Moisture prevents cracking. Gradual pressure preserves strength. Time locks the result in place. In survival situations, this matters. Bent wood can form shelter frames, sled runners, tool handles, traps, even footwear components. Steam can be improvised with boiling water and enclosed spaces. Forms can be carved from logs or dug into earth. As industrialization advanced, steam bending didn't disappear. It was replaced by machines that could bend metal faster and more consistently. Woodworking shifted toward cutting, laminating and gluing thin layers instead of bending solid pieces. The old technique survived in small pockets, boat builders, instrument makers, traditional wheelwrights. But for most people, the knowledge faded because the need faded. Until, you know, you're without modern tools. The most important takeaway isn't the technique itself, it's the approach. Medieval wood bending worked because it respected the material instead of fighting it. Heat, moisture, patience and understanding replaced force and shortcuts. That philosophy applies far beyond woodworking. It's why these methods endured for centuries with almost no change. They were efficient, adaptable, and grounded in reality. And honestly, that's exactly the kind of knowledge worth preserving. This technique built ships that crossed hostile seas, weapons that changed battles and tools that sustained everyday life. It didn't rely on rare resources or complex machinery. It relied on observation and restraint. If you care about forgotten skills, real-world ingenuity, and the quiet brilliance of pre-modern survival, this is the kind of knowledge that deserves attention. 
If this deep dive into medieval wood bending added something to your understanding of the past, take a second to support the channel. Like the video, share it with someone who appreciates old school skills, and subscribe to Legacy of Survival for more techniques that history nearly erased. There's a, a lot more waiting beneath the surface.